Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thanking God for a new day and for a new opportunity to just be able to think and speak and move and be alive. I'm certainly grateful for so many things, so many blessings, such bounty, such favor, such such a wondrous God we serve. I wanted to talk briefly about grief. As many of you know, I lost my oldest sister a few weeks ago. And like anyone else who has ever suffered a loss. I'm forever changed. My DNA has been rewritten. I didn't wake up like this. I didn't wake up. I haven't been asleep. Um, but I had a few things to do this morning. And for some reason, my house felt like it was closing in on me. And I said, you need some air. So I went out to get some air and I dropped off at a grocery. And then I went to the park. And I actually something I normally do. But it's, I just felt like I needed some nature, some of God's beauty around me. I really didn't have anything in particular on my mind. I was just kind of talking to God on and off like I do. And I went through the park and there were people out walking, some jogging. And I was looking over at the lake and the latest sun was hitting it. And it's just so beautiful. And the leaves have changed colors and they're falling off the trees. And right in that moment, I wanted to call my sister and tell her what I was looking at. And boom, my whole stomach fell. And I tried to swallow it and keep moving and that did not work out, as you can see. Then I had to think about why Why are you trying to swallow it? Why are you trying to act like you are not in the most pain ever? Why do we, in our grief, decide that we can't feel what we need to feel because it could upset somebody else or I'm not going to call anybody because, you know, they might be busy or I know people say, call me if you need me, but maybe they didn't really mean this morning. Or who can I call? I don't really have anybody I can call or I don't want to upset anyone else. I think you need to feel what you need to feel. And for me, I, I asked God to help me make it home because I wasn't doing well when I was sitting in the middle of the park. I said, will you please take me home, Lord? Take, take me to my house. And he did. Because that's what he does for his children. If you just ask him, he's a father. He's going to do it. And he's going to do it safely. And he's going to do it well. <sighs> Grief is not just the lost loss of a loved one. It is 
the loss of normalcy because we are in a horrific pandemic. The loss of jobs, the loss of security and the feeling of safety, the loss of innocence for young black men who and women who now have to be hyper vigilant when they leave the house because they fear they may not come home because they may be killed. Not just by neighborhood violence, but by those we protect and serve. That's a grief. It's grieving parents who have to give them the talk. It's parents who are grieving the normalcy of their lives because not only can they not go to work, but now their children are home and they're trying to homeschool. And some of them are educators. We're not all educators. We're not all able to teach, even though we know something. There's so much grief and so much loss. And I think sometimes we don't look at those things in terms of grief, we have to allow grief to do its job. And grief's job is not to make things better. It is to help us adjust to a new normal. It is, we can't get together for Christmas. We can Zoom but we can't hug, we can't sit next to one another at the table, or there may be someone that used to be at the table that is no more. Grief allows us, I believe, for things to get different. I always say it doesn't get better, it just gets different. And that just means we have to adjust to a new normal. If you are, in fact, grieving, nobody gets to tell you how long you can grieve in the manner in which it manifests itself. You may just cry uncontrolled. You may scream. You may get in the closet and drop to the floor. You may, I don't know, We all experience things differently. I didn't leave the house today to go to a park and lose, lose it. That wasn't the intent, but it happened. If you are grieving, feel what you need to feel. Don't stifle your grief, but be aware that there is a time when you can say, I'm not doing well, I'm not okay, and I may need some help. What help looks like for you is for you to decide. That might be therapy, it may be spiritual counseling, it could be meditation and yoga, it could be I need to talk to a friend, or maybe I just need to get out of the house and doing it safely, uh, in terms of what the guidelines of the pandemic are. It can mean a lot of things, but you have to grieve. What you don't deal with will come back and deal with you. That's not something I heard, it's something I know. You're allowed to be a little selfish in your grief. If you know that you can't handle 15 phone calls a day, chit-chatting and talking to people, don't do it. If they are your friends, they will understand. If they are upset, you have to practice some self-care. Not just for your physical body, but your mental health and your spiritual health. You have to practice some self-care while you're grieving. 
You have to give yourself a chance to adjust to the different of your life, the, the new normal. I don't want this to rush you. None of those things. You are not weak because you need help. I find it quite the opposite. I think it's a very strong attribute when you recognize that something or someone outside of you may be able to help you process your feelings better. Recognize if you're grieving in an unhealthy way, drinking, drugging, abusing yourself, abusing others. Get your help. There's no shame. Because grief is very, very powerful. But so are you. And so am I. We're humans, but we're children of God. He created us. In his own image, we are strong. We are strong in ways we don't even know. But situations like this teach us about our strength. And it's not just for you to hold on to. Let somebody know how you got through. No, it won't be identical because the situation isn't identical. The overarching message is that you will be okay again. You'll be better than okay again. You'll be happy. And it's okay for you to be happy. You don't have to feel guilty about being happy again or laughing again or going to work and enjoying what you do. You don't have to feel guilty about that. It's not what grief is about. It's about helping you process from one place to another. From your pain into your healing. Anyway. That's it. That's all I got. I pray for everyone who is grieving. Whatever it is, loss of health, loss of a job, any of those things, I'm praying for you and with you. I don't have to know you to pray for you and with you. I don't have to know you to tell you genuinely I love you with no strings attached. There are going to be days like this. There are going to be moments that catch you off guard. And there may be moments where you just feel very, very lost. Fortunately, God doesn't move. compass always leads back to him. I don't know how grateful I am.